So in the last tutorial, we have seen we can call a frame from another frame. So this is the example we have done. So run the file. Uh, you will get this add form. If I click on this add form, it will open a new file and it will the old file will get closed, right? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my video on how to call a J frame from a J frame. So if you have already seen that, uh, this is for you, in which I will call the same form, but after some time. So let's say after, uh, if once I click on add form, it should show some progress bar. And once the progress bar reached 200, it should call that form. So what is progress bar? Progress bar is something like when you run an application, let's say if I run this application, you can see somewhere down the down this, this is your progress bar, which is running here, right? So we can use the same concept in Java. Now to implement progress bar, what we need is we need a J progress bar object. So we'll use J progress bar and we'll name this object as P we'll, uh, equal to new j progress bar and if you see the constructor of progress bar now it will ask you for two things first the starting point and the number of ticks so what we'll do is we'll say the starting point is zero and the number of ticks it should jump is 20 okay which means every tick will be of five so it is like something like the 100 divided by uh, 20 which means every tick which will jump for five now, next what we need is, uh, we'll, we'll just add this uh, progress bar to your J frame. So we'll say add P. Now if once you say add dot P, let's run this code. And if you run this code now, you can see we have two things. One is add form, second is this uh, progress bar. But to make it work, that this, like if I click on this add form, instead of calling this form, it should first complete the progress bar, then it should call, right? So for that, we need to write some coding here. That means uh, the, the progress bar should progress, right? And for that, we need something called as timer. So without timer, we cannot do that. So we, we need a timer. And this timer class will belongs to Java X dot swing package. We'll say timer is T equal to new timer. Now in timer, it will ask you for a time or delay. We'll say delay should be of 1000 milliseconds, which comes out to be one second. And after every delay, it should perform some action. So you can see it was asking you for the object of action listener, right? So after every second, it will call uh, the object of action, action listener. So we'll say new action listener. So we need to remove this override code. Just to reduce the number of lines. And here. Now, so we need to write the code which should execute after every uh, one second. And the code looks something like this. Initially, I need a variable which is int i. The value of i will be 0. Now, once I come here, I need to check if my value of i is equal to equal to 100. So once your value of i reaches 100, it should call a uh, new addition, right? So from here, I don't, I don't need to call the new addition. And when once I call new addition, I should so cut. And let me just write both the code here. So cut and paste it here. So once my, once my i value reaches to 100, it should call this new addition. Right now, and after every increment or after every value, I need to I need I need to increment the value of i. Okay, we are using anonymous object. Okay, the problem is whenever you work with anonymous object, by default, all the variables becomes your all the variables become co constant. So what we can do is we can we can we can't do this. So what we'll do is we'll say extends implements action listener. So instead of using anonymous class, we'll use a concept of uh, implements here. And then after this method, let me define public void action performed and action event. So why we are doing this is because whenever you work with this concept of uh, anonymous class, so this is your anonymous class, right? And anonymous, in anonymous class, all your variables which are declared outside your anonymous class it should be final. Okay, so by default, this 
i here they, they are treated like a final since we are i'm changing the value it says uh, local variable referred in another class must be final or effectively final okay so this this will not work so we need to write this code this code inside your uh, this method okay so we were doing some mistake there and it is solved now so we cannot do this we cannot work with this so we need to say this now this is the object of action listener here so whenever i click on this whenever uh, after every one second it will call this action perform and i need to define that uh, action int i outside my method so we'll say int i okay uh, so now what we can do is after yeah after every second it should increase the value of i and we need to change the value of progress bar so we'll say p dot set value and the value of i will change uh, value of p progress bar will change to i and since we are using that uh, progress bar outside the constructor so we need to use we need to declare it outside so we'll say j progress bar p and so we don't have to declare inside okay it seems quite complex but once i have done with this i will just make a quick revision so that you will understand what I, what we are doing here and that's it so now when i click on this uh, action perform it should call the timer so we'll say t dot start so let's let's run this let's see it's is it working or not so if i click on start uh, if i run this code if i click on add form you can see it's incrementing right so the value of this is changing so after once you complete all the values in fact this is damn slow let me just increase the value or just increase the speed so we can just decrease the decrease this uh, timer if you say 100 100 is very slow let's say uh, uh, maybe 250 so after every 2 250 milliseconds it will call that uh, action perform and let me run this now so if i say add form it's getting executed and they are done so once you complete all everything it should call that function it's not working why it's not working it's because where's the code it's because the number of ticks i'm mentioning is 20 and it should not be 20 is it 20 okay uh something is messy uh, since we make made it 20 it should be Five ticks or uh, twenty ticks. It should work now. Uh, and bingo, right? So once you complete everything, it should it will call this uh, form. So let me make a quick revision what we have what we have done here. What I want once I click on that button. So once I click on this button, it will call. Is that good? It will call t dot start. So what is t here? T is a timer which starts with which uh, call uh, which which executes an event after every two fifty milliseconds. And what is that event? It is this. Now what is this? This is the object of action listener which will call a method called action perform after every two fifty seconds. So initially the value of i we are using is zero. So we need to go from zero to twenty. So once it it reaches to twenty. It will call this uh, object, which is new addition, and it will dispose itself. Now, how to reach to this 20 is because initially the value of uh, i will be 0. So every time we need to increment that value with, uh, with i++, plus plus, and then we need to set the value to i. Now, why it is incremented by 5 is because we are defining it as 20 ticks. So 100 divided by 20 is 5. So every time you say i++, plus plus, the progress bar will increment with 5. Right, so how to use progress bar? We need to define object of progress bar. We have to define the number of ticks, and that's it. You have, you have to just have to define a method of action perform, which will get called after 250 seconds. So where you can use J progress bar? You can use J progress bar to, for your projects where you need to load a database because loading a database will take some amount of time, maybe five seconds, ten seconds, twenty seconds. So in that uh, duration, you can show a progress bar to your user so that your user will feel some process is going on right so you can use j progress by in your project or in your academic projects so yeah that's it from this uh, progress bar thanks thank you so much for watching